everybody. Jeffrey Dunning here with Safe Option Strategies. Welcome to another episode of our Moving Markets podcast. Glad to have you here on a Tuesday afternoon. The U.S. stock market has been closed for almost an hour and a half. I started today's podcast a little bit later than normal because there was a lot of news to digest with uh, Microsoft earnings, Google's earnings, AMD's earnings, Starbucks earnings. Uh, We're going to talk a little bit about that and talk a little bit about the JOLTS report that happened this morning. Um, talk a little bit about what to maybe expect tomorrow morning when the market opens. Uh, before we uh, jump into the actual presentation of, of our uh, Moving Markets podcast, uh, make sure before the presentation is over or at the end of the presentation that you subscribe to our YouTube channel or, or make a comment. I also want to make the offer. I, I forget to do this and I should remind people of this every day. If you want to to make a comment about this podcast or ask us a question that we can address, if you have a question about a certain type of option trade or a certain uh, timing on stock trades, or if there's a company that you're particularly interested in, or or maybe you're just curious as to what our take is on that company, um, feel free to uh, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel and then send it send that question in via a comment on this podcast episode. We'll make sure that we look at those and and we'll we'll do our best to address them. If we get a number of different people asking about the same companies, those will take a little bit of priority, uh, but we'll do our best to, to address it in this presentation or I'll send you a one-on-one reply and give you some thoughts that I might have on a company that you're trading or that you're interested in trading or maybe a particular stock or option strategy. So, um, but make sure you make sure you like us if you're watching this on something other than YouTube. If, if you haven't already done so, subscribe to our YouTube channel and get updates on the information that we put out. And I hope you enjoy today's podcast. All right. So as you can see, the Dow finished at another record high, uh, 133.86 to the upside today, um, 38,467. I think that's the seventh time this year it's it's touched a new all-time high, just really on quite a tear and, and continues to do so. The S&P was in positive territory and negative territory back and forth almost the entire day. Finished down just a little bit, but a couple of times today, I believe it hit new all-time highs or at least got close to a new all-time high close and then sold off in the closing minutes. NASDAQ got hit a little bit today, didn't didn't do as well. You had companies like AMD, um, uh, NVIDIA, Microsoft, uh, Meta. I think they were all selling off a little bit today in in the sense of a little bit of consolidation ahead of earnings. During the day today, Alphabet, uh, Google hit a new all-time high. But uh, these... I don't pay much attention to Starbucks. We can, you know, we can mention it. But these three companies right here, Microsoft, Alphabet, AMD, as of about an hour after the market was closed, they were all trading to the downside. Microsoft down about two and almost two and a half percent, down ten dollars a share. I'm not sure what the problem was with Microsoft because Microsoft had a good earnings report, and I I've not dug into the numbers on um, the guidance, but but Microsoft beat on top and bottom line uh, 2.93 per share versus the 2.7 expected. Uh, revenue of 62 billion versus 61.12 billion expected. Uh, their revenue had growth. Um, I, I did not. Microsoft was scheduled at 3:30 my time, 5:30 Eastern time, which is still about 15 minutes away, to give their conference call and guidance statement. And we're really not going to know. They're down right now, but if they guide really strong for um, the next couple of quarters and maybe the rest of this year. This number that's negative right now on Microsoft could flip really, really fast. I mean, they're they're getting beat up pretty heavily after market, but that could turn and go up pretty quickly and pretty easily. I wouldn't read too much into that until we get the guidance statement. Um, Alphabet, Google, still hard for me to call them Alphabet. They're also taking a big hit after market, and and their primary problem, uh, they they had an earnings beat as well. They, uh, I believe they beat on top and bottom line, but they had some disappointing numbers on ad revenue and their guidance was not real strong. And so that's what's hurting um, Google. I don't 
trade them. I, I have done spread trades on them on a rare occasion, but I don't trade them. Not, not because of any dislike for the company. I just, I have money in Amazon. I have money in Microsoft. Uh, I, I trade AMD and NVIDIA. I just, I, I don't have room for all of them in my portfolio. So this is the one for me that gets left out. Um, they reported good numbers, but there's some concern about guidance and concern about their their uh, pay-per-click revenue and Google Ads revenue, and that's what's causing them to go down. The one to me that is a little more disappointing because I haven't, in my own portfolio, I have an open active trade on them, is AMD. Uh, they're getting thumped after hours, and AMD's problem is they beat on top and bottom line, but they offered weak guidance. They, they lowered their... Um, I believe they lowered their first quarter guidance and said it's not going to be quite what they were, what the analysts were expecting. Um, I did not get to listen to the conference call, but based on what I have read, I think what will probably happen with AMD in the very near future, I think what you're going to see with AMD is is a drop down to probably 150, maybe, just maybe they get as low as 135. And I think whichever these two levels, 150 or 135, where you start to see a bounce, it is going to be a great buy opportunity for AMD because I think the, the future is still bright for them. I think there's still a lot of upside. And I think by the time we get to second quarter earnings, you may be back up over that 185. Um, that, that's my prediction on AMD. So I'm going to ride this thing down, uh, catch whatever I can on, on that bounce and, and be happy and not be stressed about it and then leverage into more. Uh, if they're bouncing at 150, I'll get in at 150. If they push through 150, I'll watch for them to touch 135 and then probably jump in right there at 135. So with all three of these companies trading to the downside in aftermarket hours, unless something changes dramatically for tomorrow morning's open, uh, you're going to see um, you're going to see the Nasdaq sell off in a big way tomorrow. I think it's going to be really hard with Boeing reporting tomorrow. Boeing reports their earnings tomorrow before the market opens, and with Boeing reporting, you know they're going to get blasted over what's going on with the uh, you know the 787 or 7 737 Max. Um, they're going to take a hit when the market opens tomorrow, and it may be a big enough hit to drag the entire market down. Add to that that, you know, when you're talking about the Dow 30 components, uh, Microsoft being one of those, if if their guidance in their conference call coming up does not really turn things around for them and what they're doing so far in aftermarket trading, then you're going to see them um, really bring the Dow down heavy as well. So I, I'm looking for a major down day tomorrow. Right up until Jerome Powell speaks in the uh, Fed announcement, and then he's either going to accelerate a downward movement with his comments tomorrow, or he's going to turn things around and surprise us and share some information that is unexpected about a sooner rate cut than we think and more rate cuts than we think. I don't think he's going to say those kind of things, but he could. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the JOLTS report today, job openings. Um, this number was expected uh, to be a little bit lower than it was previously in the prior month. And instead it came up a good portion higher. And, and that is because of all these stories you continue to hear about layoffs. We, we keep getting, I, I mentioned yesterday that I, I'm leery of job numbers. I, I just think, I think they're being manipulated or I think the people you know putting out the numbers are completely incompetent. You keep, getting stories like this. PayPal is going to cut 2,500 jobs. UPS announces 12,000 12, job cuts. You keep getting numbers like this from big, big companies, and yet we keep coming up with, with um, new jobless claim numbers lower than expected and, and new jobs added higher than expected. And then six months after the fact, we get a revision that is so far down and so much lower that you got to scratch your head and say, well, which, which is it? Is it complete and utter incompetence or, or are people manipulating the numbers? Um, this, this jolts report, while I, I don't know that it's not being manipulated or done with incompetence, you know, the number was revised up last time. I wouldn't be surprised if this number is revised up a little bit when we get next month's number. Uh, but this shows that there's still a lot of job openings and a lot of jobs not being filled. And that means a lot of people who are no longer collecting unemployment checks, but are still unemployed. 
and and that's not a good thing so that this this strong number right here was not good news for the fed in the sense of their ability to cut rates it it means that probably they stay put and it is probably a longer time before they cut rates and and fewer possible rate cuts this year and and that's what really uh, made the difference in in the the Nasdaq and the S and P. When there's the thought that rates are going to stay higher, it has the biggest effect on the Nasdaq. That's why the Nasdaq was down so much more than the S and P uh, and the Russell as well. Small businesses, which make up the Russell 2000 index, um, and tech companies tend to be most affected by higher interest rates, and that's why those two indexes were down three quarters of a percent today. All eyes on the Fed for the rest of this week. I, I wouldn't. I would not open any new trades until you see what they're going to do tomorrow afternoon. I again if, in pre-market, if J.P. Morgan is up a lot more than it is, uh, SOS members look for an adjustment to our trade pre-market. Uh, but otherwise, if, if J.P. Morgan is down, which I suspect it will be in in pre-market trading tomorrow morning, then I would leave it as is. So um, there's our there's our market recap. We'll have a lot more to talk about tomorrow noon after the Fed reports. Um, that should be it'll be fun to dissect a little bit what Jerome Powell gives us and and talk about that. All right. Hope you're having a great day today. Hope you have a great evening. Thanks everyone. Bye bye.